being a lifelong New Yorker, he not only has never, he's never gotten his driver's license. Uh, that's a very common thing you might see here. Never gotten a driver's license. I don't even know if he knows how to drive license or not. But he's also hoping he can make it his whole life without ever getting a driver's license. So everyone, please welcome D-Rob to the stage. Hi, everyone. I'm Dave Robinson, and I'm really excited to talk about the YDR package. I'm going to share my screen now. This is a package that uh, fits into the tidyverse to do pairwise correlations, clustering, and dimensionality reduction all within the tidyverse. So the tidyverse, I really love it. It makes a lot of data explorations very fluid. A lot of packages that work together and kind of um, serve a lot of purposes and kind of all, all fit in together into a very tidy flow. I uh, take an example from one of my favorite simple data sets, the Gapminder data set of country statistics, uh, where each row is one observation of one country in one year. Uh, uh, the Tidyverse offers a lot of tools for working with a data set like that. I could say group by year and find the average life expectancy. So the, um, and uh, that would be two steps within the, the DPIR flow. And what I love about that is I could pipe it right into a ggplot and create a graph of the average life expectancy per year. Even within one flow, I can do more complicated operations. I could instead ask a question like, find the slope of increasing life expectancy by country, combining the tidyverse tools of dplyr, tidyr, and Broom. So uh, combining these tools together into one flow, we can answer increasingly complex questions uh, of our data all using the tidy tech, tidyverse until we get to a step something like, how is each country's life expectancy correlated with each other? Something I find frustrating about a question like that is you sometimes have to step outside the tidyverse to answer it, to start working with matrices, then retidying those matrices, and it takes you out of the flow of an analysis. So that's where the YDR package comes in. The YDR package turns an operation like what is the correlation between each country's life expectancy with each other into one step with a pairwise core function? So a pairwise core saying we're comparing countries, linking them by year, and then uh, doing the correlation of life expectancy. And I'll say we want to sort the outcome in descending order. We get to find out, we get to find out in one step how every country is correlated with each other. In this case, we learn about some of the top uh, most correlated countries like Senegal and Morocco who have highly correlated life expectancies over time. So I'll talk about how the pairwise cores is one example of the many pairwise operators that YDR provides. So dplyr is really well suited for aggregate, with, aggregate within groups. We say within each country, I wanna know something, say the average life expectancy. So it takes this table that has several observations for every country, aggregates each of them into one observation. That's a group by and summarize pattern. It's sometimes been called a split apply, uh, it used to be called a split apply recombine pattern. What pairwise operations do is instead compare each pair of, every pair of items. So instead of ending up with one observation for each country, for each of the four countries in this example, we end up with 12 observations, one for every combination of one country and another. So every pairwise operation is going to be really useful for taking that one country column and finding every possible pair of it, and then performing some useful calculation on top of it. How does that work? Well, the correlations in R are traditionally done in matrices. So this is actually the same uh, data set that uh, Thomas Mock was just sharing of penguins and their bill and flipper lengths. And typically we use a function like core that takes a matrix and turns it into a different matrix, a matrix of correlations. Uh, so this is the way that I would typically have to do a correlation. And I don't like it because really when I work with any data format that's not a table, I'm pretty much immediately like, nope. So I like to wrap all the operations of working with that matrix into a function. If we didn't have YDR, the steps for performing the pairwise correlation would look something like this. So it's really a lot more steps. More importantly, it's a very specific pattern. There's a step where we widen the data. In this case, I'm using uh, uh, tidyr's pivot wider function. So we need to turn this tidy table into a wide data set. 
Then we operate on it using a matrix operation, in this case, the core function. And finally, we retidy it because now that we've done the calculation we're interested in, the correlation, we need to, uh, to turn it into a tidy table. Together, this widen, operate, and retidy operation appears in a lot of places. I'm going to show a couple more examples. It starts with a tidy table. We widen it into an item by feature matrix. We perform some operation on it that ends up finding, say, every comparison between item one and item two, turn into a square matrix, and then we retidy it. So what's great about these pairwise core functions and their and its siblings is that the input is tidy and the output is tidy. All the steps in the middle where you work with matrices are contained within that one function. It also takes, a, it takes advantage of a couple other um, implementation details, including that it works with sparse matrices, meaning it's very performant. So I'll give another example of using pairwise functions. One is on, on United Nations voting data. If you joined my workshop on Thursday, we actually really got to know this data set very well during that workshop. It's, a, it's provided in the CRAM package UN votes, and what it has is a row for each vote of a country in the United Nations General, General Assembly. So here we see, for example, um, each, each country has one uh, vote saying it voted yes, it voted abstain, or it voted no on that roll call. So in this data set, one is a yes, zero is abstain, negative one is a no. The feature that we want to link together is the roll call ID the RCID, and that's, that's saying, well, on this first resolution, the, um, uh, the United States, Canada, Cuba, Haiti, uh, each voted on it, Canada among them voted no. So there's 733,000 observations here, uh, each representing one pair of a country and a year. So the goal that we have is to figure out what countries agree or disagree with each other. So we, um, I'm actually interested in finding out how much does the United States agree with Canada? How much does the United States agree with Cuba? How much does the United States agree with Haiti? That would be very difficult within a, a typical tidy flow because it's a pairwise operation, not an aggregation by groups. But with pairwise core, it becomes very easy. So here in one step, we're saying pair, I want the correlation of countries linked by their, by their roll call ID and examine the correlation of the vote element, the one, zero, negative one representation of did they vote yes, did they vote no. And with that, we're finding piercing correlations between each country in terms of their votes. We find out that Slovakia and the Czech Republic almost always vote together. They're, they're the most correlated pair of countries in the United Nations. Uh, we find out that Lithuania and Estonia, Lat uh, Latvia and Lithuania, Germany and Liechtenstein all tend to vote together. They're among the most correlated pairs of voters in the United Nations General Assembly. So in one step, we got from 733,000 observations uh, of a country and a vote down to 38,000 pairs of countries, finding out their correlations. What I love about having these, this correlation output in a tidy format is it makes it very easy to perform additional transformations or visualizations on top of it using tidyverse tools. So in this case, I said, let's do the pairwise correlation of countries, then filter just down for the United States. So what countries is the United States most correlated with? Well, it looks like it's the United Kingdom, Canada, Israel, Netherlands, Luxembourg, and so on. This can easily, with a couple more steps of ggplot2, can be turned into a visualization. I can use dplyr's filter top n to discover what are the 30 largest correlations in either direction with the United States. Then I can visualize that, reordering the, um, the output, and discover that the, um, and create a visualization of the kind of political spectrum of countries in the world in terms of how much do they tend to agree or disagree with the United States in United Nations General Assembly voting. So uh, we can even take this a little bit further. Rather than filtering for one country, I could pick four countries like Uganda, India, Canada, and Mexico uh, and use uh, ggplot2's faceting to compare them. So here we can, uh, with a couple of steps, discover 
uh, the countries that uh, Canada is most correlated with, India is co most correlated with, Uganda is most correlated with, and show them in one visualization. So what I really like about this is it shows how YDR is one of a couple of tidy tools we put together, followed by some deep PLYR transformations to select the country, the observations we're interested in, and then some ggplot2 to create our visualization. Uh, the step of finding the correlations has been fit into our tidy workflow. I'm going to show a second example of using, uh, using YDR, in particular pairwise correlations. And that's word co-occurrence. So there's a data set of hacker news titles. It can be retrieved from um, Google Big, BigQuery. I adapted this code only very slightly, and data set only slightly, from a blog post on topic models by Julia Silge. So this is a data set of the website Hacker News, where, uh, where people in the tech community and, um, and other communities po post links to news articles. And then they, um, and I took 100,000 uh, articles from the last two years. So uh, if you've worked with text, uh, text data in the Tidyverse before, you might have used the Tidy text package uh, developed by Julia Silge and myself. And this includes the unnest token uh, function, as well as a couple of other useful tools for tokenizing these titles and processing them a little bit so they can be worked with with tidy tools. So first, I might use a tidy text package to tokenize this, to turn it into one row per post per word. I also do a bit more to filter for only common words. So once I've got data in the tidy text format, YDR becomes very useful. I can, I can look at pairwise correlations of words. So here I'm taking the, the, tidy the tidy text data of words and saying what pairs of words most often co-occur in the same posts. Something to notice here is I'm not correlating any value that's in the data set. There's not some number in the data set that I want to say is it positively or negatively correlated. Rather, I'm calculating the phi coefficient, the Pearson correlation on binary data. This represents when the word machine appears in a, in a title, how much more likely than, it, than usual is the word learning to appear as well, or social with media. And this shows the highest pairings of, wor of correlated words include machine and learning, social and media, neural and networks, that is typical bigrams, things that are words that appear to, uh, together. So pairwise court isn't just for computing correlations on a numeric a vector, it's, it's can also be used for co-occurrence uh, correlations. Just like I did with countries, I could uh, investigate one single word. I could say what words most co-occur, uh, was disproportionately co-occur with the word data. Turns out it's science, but also personal data or data scientists or data analysis or data privacy. Uh, so we get a sense of some of the clusters the word data might appear with them. Something that's great about pairwise co-occurrences uh, co co is they can be fed into the tidygraph and ggraph packages to create a network plot. So this is a tour, uh, uh, a tour to another part of the tidyverse where I said we're, we're creating tidy networks. Ggraph, if people haven't used it, uh, tidygraph is a package for uh, working with, gra with uh, graph objects, nodes and vertices, very sim uh, and edges, very similarly to how you'd work with dplyr, and ggraph creates networks within the grammar of graphics. So very similar to how you create them with ggplot2. So in just a couple of steps, we were able, I was able to, to create this network of word, uh, of word associations within Hacker News titles. And this gives a sense of some of the topics that Hacker News might cover. We see a giant cluster centered around things like Apple, iOS, JavaScript library development application that seems to represent web development. We see another one uh, cluster that uh, kind of linked to it by the Facebook node that might represent politics, including ones like coronavirus uh, or um, uh, Twitter, pandemic, climate. And we see little clusters with things like machine learning and data science. We see machine learning deep network all linked together. So pairwise co-occurrences fit really well with, co with, um, with network plots and the tidygraph and ggraph packages. Pairwise core is one of only is only one of, of uh, several pairwise operations provided in YDR. You can also perform pairwise counts, just how often do these two items appear together? Pairwise distances, Euclidean Manhattan, or you can do cosine similarity, pairwise mutual information, 
or Burroughs Delta, which is often used for authorship att attribution in text data. So um, these are a couple of pairwise operations that, that YDR provides. Pairwise operations have been around for a while, but something that's much newer, really uh, actually still only in the development version of YDR is clustering and dimensionality reduction. Uh, so the, the, YD, the YDN operate retidy pattern that I showed before, I showed it on pairwise, opera on pairwise operations, but it's very flexible. There are many situations in which your input is tidy, the middle is wide matrices, and you want your output to be tidy again. One example is k-means. k-means is a cl classic approach to clustering based on picking one, uh, picking some number of k centers, and then an, it's an iterative algorithm that ends up finding the k centers that explain as much of the variation as you can. Clustering is an example of a wide operation. We might have our data being tidy in, uh, at first, but we would need to widen it, turn to an item by feature matrix, then perform an operation that turns it into an item by cluster vector. So that's an operation where you might need to widen, perform an operation of clustering, and then retidy. This can be done with the brand new widely k-means function. So widely k-means turns the data into a matrix, performs k-means clustering on it, and then, re, um, and then retidies it. So if I took that gap minder data from earlier showing life expectancy of each country over time, and I said I want to cluster uh, countries by their life expectancy over time, I could do that in one step here and get a country by cluster matrix. That's oh, pardon me, a country by cluster um, table. What's great about having the, the input and output be tidy is it means it's easy to say visualize our six clusters. Here I cluster the six countries based on their life expectancy over time, and then I join it back into the data and visualize it, showing the life exp the uh, life expectancy trends within each of the clusters. We can see say that cluster two tend to be a very high um, one of the highest life expectancy groups of of countries, maybe cluster one was a very fast growing cluster of countries, and there's other ones like fi uh, clusters like fi cluster five and cluster three represent countries where it started at a lower point and might have trended downward at various times. So why the k-means, let's do that all within a tidy framework. There are three widely functions in, de uh, in the development version of, of YDR, widely k-means, widely h-clust, and widely a SVD that, that was written wrong. SVD is for dimensionality reduction, uh, for uh, singular value decomposition. So I'm going to show an example of, of uh, combining dimensionality reduction and k-means clustering. I showed a couple matrix operations earlier, but sometimes you want to chain multiple matrix operations together. You start from an extremely high dimensionality matrix, you reduce it through singular value decomposition, a dimensionality reduction operation, and then you perform, say, k-means clustering on the, the reduced dimension space. So it's two steps of, um, of matrix operations. You can do that with two widely operations in a row. We start from a tidy one row per country per vote data set. We perform widely SVD to reduce the dimensionality down to 16 dimensions. We produce, we, we perform widely k-means to turn it into, a, into just uh, six clusters. So from that, we, we can then get a cluster data set performed on the reduced dimensionality space. What I love about that is we can then bring it into ggplot2 and the maps package uh, with just a little bit of adjustment to visualize our voting blocks. So I've, I've now clustered the United Nations countries based on a reduced dimensionality space and then said they tend to fit into these voting blocks. We can see, for example, there's a Latin America block in green, an Africa and Southeast Asia block in, in um, uh, brown, uh, looks like Western powers, Australia and Canada fit in, in blue. These are groups of countries that all tend to vote together. And in just a couple of steps, we get to widely, we get to uh, cluster them and then turn them into a map, all using our set of tidyverse tools. So in conclusion, 
I think a really important part of the tidyverse philosophy comes from um, uh, a, a 20th century computer scientist, Hal Abelson, he said, no matter how complex and polished the individual operations are, it is often the quality of the glue that most directly determines the power of the system. So a lot of the power from the tidyverse comes from this really fluid glue. And with the, and with the pairwise operations do is provide a very natural glue from go, for going from a tidy data set to a matrix and then back again. By turning these wide operations into atomic actions, instead of something that takes you out of the flow of your analysis and you have to do some processing, then reprocessing, you can do a lot with just a little code. Here are the four examples we showed today, looking at, the, at what countries most agreed with four countries, clustering and turning words into a network, clustering and then visualizing the trends in, with, of, um, of life expectancy, and creating a map of similar voting behavior. Each of these can be done without a lot of code because we've um, we've turned these wi wide operations into an atomic action. So I'm really excited to share uh, the, and and um, promote this wide YDR package to the world. Thank you. Thank you, D-Rob. I think a lot of us are going to get a lot of good use out of that package. I already took a bunch of notes. I have a project I'm doing. I'm going to use like two of your functions already for that project. So thank you very much for that great timing of putting out this package.